Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today it's another small video on uh, ca uh, TV Paint camera movement. I received a few messages uh, on that subject and uh, I know it's a little bit tricky so I will try to explain how I use the cameras um, to, to work on my storyboard or on my shots. So I took this background you have maybe already seen you've seen before uh, for the boo boo transformation and we will we will work on that before everything uh, most of the time in the studios uh, they don't often use the cameras uh, of tv paint they use them as a first uh, start you know to have the intention but they will redo the camera movement on the compositing software so I already heard some people worked on uh, After Effects to do the camera movement afterward or uh, DaVinci Resolve. Personally, I use DaVinci Resolve and when I have some complex movement camera, I, I create a mock-up of the camera movement on TV Paint, but I will redo it afterwards on um, DaVinci Resolve. So let's dive in. The first thing uh, to know about the cameras they need um, a time indication. So you cannot create a camera movement on one frame. You need a few frames. So I will start, I will create maybe a choose two or three second animation, sounds perfect. Also a quick tip, sometimes you have uh, different ways of seeing the time. Here you can see the time in seconds or you can see it in frames. So you just have to click on the stopwatch here and you switch the mode. It's very important. I discovered that uh, not a long time ago. So I will just play the animation. One, two, three. Perfect. It's maybe too short. So I will add five seconds. Let's play it. Perfect. Let's work on that. So it's important to have a time indication. Then I will click on my camera here. Also, you have some uh, different information uh, on this element. So sometimes you want to, to see the camera uh, when you're drawing, etc. You just need to click show camera. As an example, if you have this kind of camera, and I don't click show camera and then I draw something like that. Uh, I don't have any reference. So it's important to turn turn on the camera. And here I can see I drew on outside of the camera. It's very handy. Also, you can go in uh, display settings here and you have the camera settings. And if you want to change the opacity or the color of it you can so i think it's that if i click red you can change yeah, the the frame of the camera i don't know how to undo that so um i will advise you to not do it oh yeah and here i i choose a black color sorry i will not choose it but if you click and you can choose another uh, surrounding color and also you can change the opacity so if I want 37%, it's good. I prefer to have something very dark because um, the brain, it's easy for the brain to, to, to look everything of the picture. And when you are working on background, most of the time you are uh, drawing outside of the camera and you create your composition with the outside of the camera. So I prefer to have something very, very dark. So I focus only on what is inside of the camera. So display settings, if you want to uh, update all of that. Also, uh, you can, uh, yeah, when you play your animation, automatically um, 
TV paint will crop outside of the camera and you will have uh, the final result but sometimes you're working on animation that are very tiny or on a specific element on a specific area of your frame and you only want to focus on this element you can just click here and here if I stop my animation here if I am working I don't know on this beautiful stone I just play and uh, the software will run my animation without moving the camera. And if I stop and I turn on that, it will play the final results in the frame. If you have any question about that, uh, please drop a comment. I will be happy to answer. Let's dive in on the camera movement. So like everything you have a start so where your camera starts and where the camera begins sometimes you have some steps in the middle and i think most of the people they have some issues with how to stop the camera in the middle of two extreme poses and i will show it to you it's quite handy but um, as i said it's only for mock-up so maybe my camera I don't know, I will do a dumb camera movement. So my camera starts here and finishes here. So if I play my animation, wonderful. And your question is, okay, but uh, my camera starts at the first frame and stops at the last frame, but I want my camera to start maybe after one second or yeah, one, one second here. So here it's where it's handy. You need to click on the time profile and you need, you, here it's the original position of the camera and here is the final position. And this is the time. So if I don't want the camera to move at the beginning, I just need, because here my uh, camera is uh, maybe at, uh, a quarter of her movement of its movement so if I, at the quarter of the movement i want the camera to be at the beginning i just need to flatten that so let's recap after this amount of time my camera is al always at the initial position are you following it's it's quite tricky but le let's try to recap my position, you know, it's my original position and it's my final position. And this is the time. So if in the middle of my, my animation, I want. So this is the middle of my animation. You know, this is zero and this is the end of my animation. If I want the camera to be at the original position, I just need to flatten the curve. And as you can see on my left, uh, here my camera is in the middle of the movement but if i flatten the camera is always at the start so at the moment i will just do it in linear way so i play my camera doesn't move and then my camera moves okay so it's very sharp i will uh, okay and so we'll do exactly the same thing i want the camera not to arrive at the last frame, but maybe a few frames before. So also your red line is where you are. So maybe if you have the animation of a character and you tell yourself, I want the camera to be on that position, you just put, you choose the right uh, picture image and you have your origin. So if I want here, my camera to, to be at the final position. I just move this point and put it there. So let's run the animation. My camera doesn't move, the camera moves, and then the camera stops before the end of the animation. So, so I think, yeah, this is the, the first step. Also, you can change the curve because as you can see, here the camera the movement is very sharp because you choose a linear uh, transformation if we have a spline so the camera movement will start slowly and finish slowly so it's a slow slow hinge is 
Oh, I don't remember the name. Is in, is out, I think it's the name. Sorry if it's wrong. So I play. I don't have a lot of frames, so it's quite sharp. But as you can see, the start of the movement is uh, progressive and same for the end. Okay. Also, you have polyminal. It's when you, you will have, as you can see, the curve will start uh, before and after as you can see i have another curve after so if you want to have uh, this kind of movement you you can do so i will sorry i don't have the right word to explain that but if your final position is that but you want the camera to continue a little bit and then to come back you choose this setting i hope you're following me i will just run the animation so you will understand what the preliminal does here and it goes a little bit more far and come back yeah weird isn't it i don't use it uh, i don't often use it but sometimes when you have a huge amount of frames and you want maybe the camera not to stop on a very specific position but to go a little bit more and then to come back it's uh, the right choice but I prefer spline and most of the time linear, to be honest. Uh, so you're telling me, okay, Alex, but uh, now I want the camera to stop exactly in the middle and I want to have uh, the camera to be here. So how do we do that? So you can add other position on a camera. As you can see, uh, the software created um, a curve. You can change that if you want something linear so something straight you just click here if you want a spline uh, you choose spline i will choose a linear for the example this will be simpler so maybe your camera starts you go on the right and then you go on bottom and you tell me oh i want uh, i don't know the camera maybe to start to to stay in the middle a little bit more so i will go on on the on the frame so i think it's here here, I want uh, the camera to be uh, on this position for a few frames. So I will add a point. So I just have to click here. And I would add another point because as you maybe understood, I need to flatten the position in the time. So I need at this time and this time to have exactly the same position. So I need to create a plateau. And here. The thing is, as you can see, when you're working with spline or polyminal, this create artifacts. So most of the time when you have this kind of camera movement, you need to keep uh, linear uh, movement. So perfect. So I will try it before playing. So as you can see, my camera uh, stays on the same. And this is, that's why I'm I was saying it's only for um, a mock-up, you know, because it's not very precise. I need to find the right, yeah, maybe here, and I need to flatten that. And if I play my animation, my camera stays in the middle and then go on the last position. Here, here. So as you can see, I have a tiny steps just before it's because my line is not on on the perfect spot and here it's uh, always tricky you need to to play with the, the dots and to to find the right position okay it works perfectly so it's very sharp uh, it, it's also because we don't have a lot of frames you can work with a linear uh, line with a, a huge amount of frame and you will you will have something um, soft and smooth here we don't have a lot of frames it's very sharp it's linear it's just for uh, an example it's almost everything i use in uh, yeah in the in the, the camera settings i'm i'm thinking do i have anything else you have some uh, zoom parameters also you can um show the four uh, the a safe area if you want you can modify also the the size of your camera 
I don't know if uh, you have something specific. No. I don't use all of these settings. I just click OK. And as you can see, I will have a safe area on my cameras for the text and also when you, uh, because on some specific cinema, they crop the picture or at the TV or this kind of stuff. And you need to work inside of the inner frame. Same for the subtitles. Sometimes you need to, to be careful not to put um, important, important story uh, elements in this safe area. Um, but most of the time I turn it off because as you can see I already have a lot of stuff on my canvas and I easily get lost. So parameters and I uncheck camera movement. What else? Uh, maybe if you want to redo this camera movement, uh, I don't know if it's possible, maybe it's possible to export uh, the TV pane. Uh, yeah. So for the export, uh, what I would do is just to, uh, because if you want to recreate this camera movement, what I do, uh, I don't know if you have better solution, I don't think so. It's just I go in uh, show as I sh display setting and I would just modify the camera viewfinder, something like that. And I will just do a screenshot of my canvas and then I will open because I already have my uh, background in uh, DaVinci. I open this screenshot. I crop it on the on the right proportions and then I will recreate my cameras uh, on the software. I don't know if we have um, a solution to export a camera movement on one frame, but I'm not sure it's possible. But yeah, I, I do I do it this way and then I just um, try to check at, at which frame uh, my uh, camera movement starts or end. It's quite dirty, but uh, it's the way I do it. If maybe you, you you know a solution to export the camera movement, please let me know. I really hope this um, tutorial was useful. I know I had a lot of uh, camera uh, questions about cameras and uh, it's the way I use them. I don't know if it's the perfect way, but yeah, I use them like that when I do my storyboards. I do a mock-up and then I will recreate this camera movement directly in DaVinci. If you have again any question, please drop me a comment and uh, thank you very much for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.